This video was sponsored by Skillshare. More about them later. Almost exactly a year ago, I made a review of the Elegoo Saturn Resin 3D Printer. Although my experience was not without problems, I was very impressed overall, and I used it a lot on the channel to print various things, including some things that I wouldn't have been able to print on my other smaller printers. A few weeks ago, though, Elegoo sent me a pre-release version of their Elegoo Saturn 2 Resin 3D Printer, and I've been using it extensively since then. Now, based on the comparison I just showed you, you might think that the printer's gotten smaller, but actually it's gotten noticeably larger in all dimensions, and I just had to move my camera farther back. In addition to increasing in size, it's also gotten a little bit more angular. They've gotten some angles in both the bottom part and the lid that look pretty cool, honestly. The previous Saturn was basically just a big rectangular box, so this is a little bit more attractive looking. One minor difference is that the bottom portion here on the Saturn II is made of plastic as compared to metal on the original Saturn. But the overall construction is essentially the same. You've got the bottom portion, which has the electronics in it. Above that, on top of the UV emitting screen, is a vat for resin. And then you have a build plate that lowers down into the vat, and that's where your actual models are built. And you have a red acrylic lid that sits on top of it and keeps out any stray UV light, and hopefully keeps in some of the smell as well from the resin. Now I'm going to look at the build plate itself a little bit more closely. Of course it unscrews and can be taken off the printer, so you can easily get at your prints and remove them. This on the left is the original Saturn's build plate, which at the time seemed gigantic, but this one, as you can see, is a bit bigger, at least wider. Uh, it's about the same from front to back, but it is wider by a good inch or perhaps a slightly more. So uh, that can be very useful in certain cases. One thing you can't see very easily from this though is that the vertical build volume, that is how tall the model you can print, has also greatly increased from the original Saturn, going from uh, just a little under 8 inches to just under 10 inches, and that can be quite useful as well. One thing I thought I should mention because I have reviewed the Elegoo Wash and Cure station in the past is that this printer is now big enough that you cannot put the build plate inside the actual wash station as you could with the previous Saturn, which you can see here. But you can always take it off the build plate and just put it in this basket here and wash them that way. So it's not really that huge of a deal. Similarly, it is actually possible to print things that are too big to fully fit into the cure station, or at least they won't spin around properly. But you can get around that by just kind of exposing them for 30 seconds and then manually spinning the model. If we remove the resin vat, we can see the actual screen that does the printing, which on the Saturn II has been upgraded to an 8K screen, going from a 4K screen on the regular Saturn. I hadn't really seen a big difference in quality going from a regular uh, 1080p screen to a 4K screen, if I'm honest. So I was a little bit skeptical about this as well, but We'll see how it worked out in the end. The printer does come with this uh, filter, air filter, that you're meant to install inside the case of the printer. It's got a little USB connector here that will plug into just a USB power jack inside. And uh, basically there's a, a small fan right there and a block of activated charcoal that I guess, in theory, will uh, reduce some of the smell of the resin. I haven't used it up until this point, and I don't think I'm going to be able to really tell you anything about it, because here in the basement where I have all my printers, I mean, there's like half a dozen other resin printers around. We've got a bunch of resin. Uh, I'm not going to be able to tell the difference, but uh, I mean, it's better to have than not, I think. I mean, it might actually have some effect. So when you first get this, the charcoal is going to be wrapped in some plastic wrap that you're going to want to remove, and uh, then you just... Take out this little plug here on the printer itself and plug that in. So the printer's power is now on and as you can see there's an LED light that came on on the front there. And I can hear a bit of a fan noise more than I could when uh, the purifier was not installed. Little, little tiny bit of airflow there maybe? Yeah, I don't know. Um, just thought I would mention it because none of my other printers have had a feature like this. Of course the idea here is that you fill the vat with UV sensitive resin and then the screen will turn on and selectively expose parts of that resin to harden it and cause it to 
adhere to the build plate, and then the build plate will move up a very small amount, and the whole process will repeat thousands of times until you've finally printed something out of thousands and thousands of individual layers. To print something, you're going to need an STL file, which is a 3D model that you can either purchase from somewhere or download for free from various places, and then use a slicer software, such as Cheetobox, which I'm using here, to slice it into lots of different pieces that the printer can understand and use to print. This is a difficult process in some cases, uh, just trying to figure out the best way to do this, the best orientation to use, and the best support material, and it's definitely a learning process. Once you've uh, saved it to a memory stick, you can put that into the right side of the printer here, and it'll read the files off of that stick. You can turn it on in the front with this large power button, which is really the only button on the thing, and then use the touch screen to select the model that you want to use. Just to look at the menus a little bit, we have tools here, which has some settings that you're probably not going to have to change very often, and system, which you're going to use even less. So basically you're going to spend most of your time in the print menu here, where you actually select the individual sliced model that you're going to be printing. One minor complaint I have as a Mac user is that you get a lot of these file names that start with a period, but I guess you can just skip over those. Uh, once you've actually started the printing process, the print platform will lower down into the vat of resin, and then it'll start slowly building up your model. And because this has a monochrome screen, it's actually relatively quick, although if you wanted to really max out your build volume, it could take 12 or more hours. As you can see, I've filled the resin vat completely up to the max fill line, which I think uses about four-fifths of a liter bottle of resin, so that's quite a bit. You do want to be careful not to go over that line, though, because as you can see, when it goes in there, it will get up pretty close to the edges of the vat, and you really don't want it spilling over. In this case, the model took, I think, around six or seven hours to completely print. And I was really blown away by how this looked, even just straight off the printer like this. The amount of detail is really impressive. Part of that's the model, but also I think part of it is the printer itself. And here we have the completed bust. And honestly, this is one of the most impressive things that I have printed. I had to run and show my wife <laughs> just how impressed I was with the model itself, which has an amazing likeness but also uh, the quality of this print. You can see, if you look closely at the uh, skin, you can see some of the pores and imperfections and everything. If we want to take a little bit of a closer look at it here, it's really quite impressive in person. It's a nice size as well. I'm really happy with how this turned out. You can see the sort of smooth portions of the model here, like the clothes that he's wearing, are extremely smooth feeling. So you can barely feel, actually can't feel any layer lines or anything like that, can't see any layer lines. Just look how smooth that is. And stuff like these fine details in the zipper and the buttons and all that kind of stuff just came out perfectly. And I think a lot of that smoothness and lack of layer lines can be attributed to the 8K screen. And if we take an even closer look, you can see what I was talking about with some of the uh, skin texture, the pores and imperfections that are perfectly recreated in this model. By the way, his glasses are actually removable because they're printed as a separate piece. The designer created a couple of other accessories that you can use. They have uh, this hat that I printed separately, and of course some sunglasses that you can add if you want him to look more like his Heisenberg alter ego. I kind of prefer the previous, oops, there we go. I kind of prefer the uh, just regular glasses version, but this is also pretty cool. And of course you can, uh, Take the sunglasses off if you want to see his eyes. Maybe just put the regular eyeglasses back on. I think that looks pretty good as well. But uh, yeah, really, really cool stuff. And, uh, you know, this is one of those examples of things that I don't think I'm going to try and paint, at least not for a long time, because I don't think I could do justice to it. And I think it's not going to look better than it already does just as a raw print, which I think is saying something. So I was really happy with how that model turned out, but I wanted to try something a little bit more ambitious. So I decided to look at Gambody.com, which I had never actually used before, but I've seen in the past and been kind of intrigued by. They have lots of different models for sale and apparently have some uh, customer support that will help you if you have trouble with them as well. In the end, I decided to go with this Sauron model. I'm a big fan of the Lord of the Rings movies, and I actually have some 
one six scale Lord of the Rings figures as well from years ago when I was collecting that sort of thing. So I thought it might be cool to take this model and scale it up to one sixth scale and display it with those figures. One thing I do like about Gambody is that they have different versions of most of their models for different types of 3D printing, such as resin or filament, and they're cut up in different ways and scaled in different sizes to be appropriate for those different kinds of printing. Now, in this case, the Sauron model is available in two different scales. They have a 1 16th scale version, which is intended for resin printing, which you can see here. And then there's a 1 8th scale version, which they are saying is for filament printing. But of course, neither of those was quite big enough for my purposes, so I had to take the FDM version and upscale it by 120% to arrive at what I imagined would be roughly 1 6th scale. I was a little concerned that some of the pieces might not fit on the build plate at 120%, but I did some testing with the largest pieces I could find, such as this piece of the base, which is divided into four sections, and also this piece of the cloak, which is divided into several different sections. And yeah, it barely fits, but it does fit. So I decided to go ahead with this plan and print everything at 120% of the FDM version. Here we have one part of the cape being printed. Each one of these large parts would have taken 8 to 10 to 12 hours, depending on how tall it was. So when you have maybe dozens of parts, it can, of course, take quite a long time to print, but it is a lot faster than it would be with a filament printer, and certainly a lot faster than many of my older resin printers would have done, even if they could have handled this size, which they couldn't. All right, here we have all of the parts printed and then washed in alcohol and cured in UV light so that they're ready for assembly. They did take a fair amount of time to print, as you might imagine. These are gigantic pieces. This is uh, just one of four pieces that make up the base, for example. Each one of these would have taken probably about uh, 10 or 12 hours, something like that, to print. It's the kind of thing you'd just set and, you know, leave to print overnight, most likely. But uh, I had essentially no problems printing any of these things, which I was really impressed with, especially because I wasn't using pre-supported files or anything like that. I had supported all of these myself and arranged them myself on the build plate and so forth, but uh, no failures, really no problems of any kind. The only issue I would say I had is that this part I originally printed, <laughs> stupidly, uh, completely solid. Uh, partially, I guess my thinking was, you, know, you can see that there are sort of gaps built into the model, and that even if you print it solid, I thought it wouldn't be that much of a big, you know, that big of a deal just to have sort of this section be solid, but actually it is quite a bit. It was very heavy, and it seemed like it also kind of distorted the uh, shape of the model a little bit, so that when I tried assembling it just to see if they would, you know, fit together, it didn't quite fit together as well as the other pieces, and so I just decided to scrap that piece and print it again hollow, so that's what this is. And yes, it did uh, fit together better. Again, aside from that, uh, no problems really, super impressed. And I will say also, the level of detail is extremely good. So you can see, you know, on here we have just this ornate armor and so forth, and the little pieces of the chain mail, stuff like that. We have, uh, they, they, they provided two versions of the head. Uh, my understanding is that the short one is probably more screen accurate and the large or the, the taller one here maybe looks a little bit better, more in proportion to what the rest of the figure looks like. So I haven't decided which I'm going to use yet, but if we look closely, you can see all these little details in the armor, all the etching, stuff like that. Uh, I'm not sure how well the camera even picks up some of this detail, but very impressed. And also all of the uh, areas that are kind of smooth, you know, just like this, are amazingly smooth feeling. <laughs> there, there are really no layer lines that I can see here at all. I am gonna have to try and put this together now. I have, you know, as I've been going along, doing test fits of the different pieces, especially worrisome to me was this cloak because it's got like eight pieces of this giant cloak. And uh, I was afraid that if they didn't fit together well, it would be really uh, a problem. Uh, so far, from what I can tell, it does fit together pretty well. There's going to be some cracks, some some seams between the pieces, 
but nothing uh, too major, I think. I'm not gonna assemble this whole thing on camera, but just to give you an idea, we've got you know these little pegs in various places where different parts will attach. So you've got uh, like an arm, that's the other arm. That goes right there. And then you've got a forearm. It's always a little tricky to figure out which arm is which, but I believe that's that's that. And then we've got the head that goes there. And also uh, these shoulder pieces that attach like that. Lots of stuff. For the most part, with the exception of the cloak, most things are going to go together, I think, in a way that kind of hides the seams, which is nice. You won't have to be filling a lot of, in a lot of gaps because of the way they've modeled this. So you can see here, it kind of fits in to that. And you can just, just leave that seam as it is, as far as I'm concerned. So it hopefully it won't be too terribly difficult to assemble. There's the uh, legs there. So yeah, um, I am going to leave some of it unassembled just to uh, make painting later on easier, but I'm going to just sort of temporarily put them on so I can see the entire thing, uh, what it's going to look like, and, and so you can see it as well. Uh, I will say 90% uh, or so of all the joints and everything fit together nicely, no problems whatsoever. Uh, when you're dealing with something like this where it's, um, you know, straight cuts butting up against another straight cut, it can be difficult to get it perfect. Let's see if I can show you here. So let's see, I don't <laughs> have to remember how these go together. This one, for example, fits together nearly perfectly. If you can see, you see right there, there's almost no seam. But if we take like this one and try to put it up along here, hold on, let me put this down. <laughs> try to put it up along here. It's not quite as nice of a seam and I'm gonna have to uh, put a little putty in there most likely, but uh, that's really not that big of a deal. So I'm um, pretty happy with how this has turned out so far. Let's go ahead and get this uh, assembled. I'm not gonna paint it during this video because it's kind of outside the scope of what we're talking about, but assuming I do ever get this painted, I will make a separate video about that. Before we take a look at the finished piece, I'd like to tell you about today's sponsor, Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning community with thousands of classes on a wide variety of topics. There are no ads and they're adding new premium classes all the time, so you're sure to find something that interests you. Recently I've been taking the class Triple Your Typing Speed, The Ultimate Guide to Keyboard Mastery by Ali Abdal. I do a lot of typing on my job and I'm not that bad at it. I can touch type in the 80 words per minute range, but I always like to find new tips and tricks to kind of refine my technique and get a little bit better. In the class, Ali talks about lots of different approaches you can use to speed up your typing, from using keyboard shortcuts, which I'm a big fan of, to choosing the right keyboard and using the right posture and so forth, and I just found it to be uh, generally a pretty useful course. If you'd like to try Skillshare for yourself, the first 1,000 people to use the link in the video description will get a one-month free trial of Skillshare. So there's the finished model. It's a little bit difficult to convey how big this is in person, but if you 
Compare it to this vintage Jabba that I also printed on the Saturn II, you may get some idea. He's around 18 inches tall if you include the base and the spikes on his helmet, and he's definitely one of the most impressive things that I've ever printed. As I mentioned, I didn't completely assemble this model because it's going to make it a lot harder to paint, so I have left some things just uh, temporarily attached here while I did glue other things. Uh, the actual body is not attached to the base in any way, and in fact I probably will leave it that way even if I do paint it. I'll have to say I am blown away by how well this model turned out. I was a little bit wary about the cape because as you can see, first of all it's huge and it has uh, some fairly visible seams there where the different parts come together. I'm hoping I can use some modeling putty to make those not so obvious. But uh, yeah, generally speaking, this came out really well. It did cost about $100 in resin. I think I used at least four liter bottles of standard Elegoo resin. That's something to keep in mind. It's not cheap. But then again, a pre-made statue of a similar size and style would cost around $1,000. So it's all relative, I guess. So what's my conclusion about this machine? I've only had it for about a month or so, so I can't say that I've put it fully through its paces and there may be things that crop up later on. But so far, I have zero complaints about this printer. It has been the most impressive of all of the ones that I've tried so far on the channel. And I think I can recommend it without hesitation. The only thing I would say is just make sure that you know what you're getting into if you're going to be starting resin printing for the first time. And make sure you actually need a printer that's this large. You might get by just as well with a smaller printer like the regular Mars, for example. Mars 3 is a good printer. This printer will apparently retail for $600, although you can pre-order it for $550 right now and get it... I guess, uh, sometime in August. But depending on your needs, you might be just as well served by the original Saturn, which you can now get fairly cheaply on clearance. I'm going to go ahead and put affiliate links in the video description for all of those printers and also for the Gambody model that I printed of Sauron there. And if you're interested, go ahead and check them out. Thanks for watching. This video was brought to you by Skillshare and my Patreon supporters, including these Palace VIPs and especially Angelica Brady. Thanks very much for your support. If you'd like to know more about how you can support the channel for as little as $1 a month, click the link in the video description.